I believe my father tonight to do what has never happened before in GKC. What has never happened before in maximum impact. For his word says his blessings are new every day. And his word says he daily loads us with benefit. What the Lord has never done in this ministry. Tonight, the Lord is going to do it. Especially in your financial life. Especially in your marital life. In the name of Jesus. Tonight is a night that every one of us should be very, very, very expectant. For the word of God will come swiftly. The word of God will come. It says, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit. That word will come in spirit form. As many whose hearts are open will receive the word and the word will become flesh in their life. Tangible to be touched in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we hand over this session to you, King Jesus. Have your way. Amen. Holy Spirit of God, open the heart of your people. Amen. Let every man here tonight receive a tangible blessing. Amen. May we never remain the same Amen. forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I want somebody to be excited because you see at times if we designate the service we say the service is a healing service Please reduce the sound. if we said the service is healing service we believe God for healing the Bible says God created Adam and Eve and he came to Adam and he said to Adam Adam I've created everything now I'm giving you the responsibility to give names and the names that Adam called those things, this is the wisdom the Lord has always been teaching me. He said, whatever you call it, that is what is going to happen. Tonight is a night that the Lord wants to visit our financial lives. Amen. And the Lord is going to give you promotion you have never experienced before in the name of Jesus. Amen. It doesn't really matter the level you are now. The word of God is all you need. Because that same word can pick a beggar from the dung hill and makes him to sit with princes it is still the same word of god the same word that heals the same word that raises up the dead the same word it's the same word with the same power and efficacy to deliver you from whatever confusion the devil has brought into your financial life amen. say amen if you believe that amen. god bless you your excellencies be seated Tonight, I'm going to be teaching, and I want you to open your heart, believing God that the Lord is going to speak to you. It's the year of a supernatural turnaround. That turnaround must be your experience. And it's the month of uh, fruitful seasons, meaning that the Lord has just brought you face to face to your own season of fruitfulness. I would like to, expect, to explain to you when we talk of prosperity, prosperity generally it's the state of well-being, the state where you are very prosperous, successful, state where what you, you need or what you desire, you each, it can easily be reached by you. It is not a state of struggling. Hallelujah. Amen. It is generally a state of good life or good living. I'm giving you this background in order for you to desire something powerful tonight. We deliberately took our text from the book of Proverbs because the book of Proverbs 
the bulk of that book was written by King Solomon, the king in Israel that the Lord said in a covenant with him, he said, if you only will obey me and follow the path of your father, I'm going to give you wealth like nobody. And that there is not going to be any king either before him or after him. Now, the guy became so rich, so wealthy. In his prosperity, he gave us some wisdom tips. And these are the things we want to dissect. We want to settle down with these things in order for you to know the path you want to follow. Very briefly, I want to make a very clear distinction. There is prosperity from the kingdom of God. And there is what the word also called prosperity from the kingdom of Satan. Don't mix the two together. If you're a child of God, the prosperity of God's kingdom is your portion. Amen. 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 Prosperity in God's kingdom is your portion. Amen. Because it is in this world, you need a life to, need to, I mean, to live a life of uh, peace, a life of no struggle. When we get to heaven, there is nothing like poverty. There is nothing like you are broke. So here on earth, you need the power to get wealth. So I established the fact that in the kingdom of God, there is prosperity. Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 35 and verse 27. Let's read it. Psalm chapter 35, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. As many of us who are servants of God tonight, God is saying, your prosperity is his own pleasure. He has pleasure. He desires you to be prosperous. Say amen. amen. In 3 John chapter 2, I verse chapter 3 John verse 2, he say, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospereth. So we have prosperity from the kingdom of God, from the kingdom of light, from the kingdom of Jesus. And we have prosperity from the kingdom of Satan. These two are two separate kingdoms. And but all of us are on this planet earth. So there are some people who got their prosperity or their wealth from Satan. And we see them every day. We go to the same shopping, shopping mall. We enter the same bus and we see them all around us. Some took their prosperity from Satan. You can see it physically around. But none of them will tell you that I got my word from Satan. The need, the need for every one of us to exercise caution. Now, the prosperity from the kingdom of Jesus Christ is also real. God do bless his people. But tonight I'll, I'll be sharing with you that in both kingdoms, both of these kingdoms, there are terms and conditions that an individual must meet in order to enjoy this prosperity. Either from the kingdom of light or from the kingdom of Satan. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. You can't enjoy prosperity from Satan if you are not ready to sign up. Neither can you enjoy prosperity from Jesus if you are not ready to obey and to stand by his dictates. Now, I want to ask a general question tonight. Why do people... Want stuffs from God, yet they don't want that God. They want what God has in stock, but they don't want the God who has it or who, who is custodian of that. They want blessing, they want prosperity, they want peace of mind, yet. They don't want God. 
you may say, Pastor, how possible is that? It's very, very possible. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says something in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 73. We're going to compare two scriptures there. It's going to bless you. Psalm 73. You know the account very well, but I'm going to explain. Psalm 7. Or let, let's go to Job chapter 21. We're coming back to Psalm 73. Job chapter 21. We're going to take the reading from verse 1. Hallelujah. Every trait of poverty in your lineage, it shall be wiped up by the power of King Jesus. Amen. This three days, very, very powerful and very important. Because as some of you, you begin to hear what you've not heard before, or as you hear it, it's going to begin to intoxicate you. And you want to do things that is very abnormal. I read from verse 1. But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolation. Suffer me that I speak, and after that I have spoken, mock on. As for me, in my complaint to man, and if I were so, and if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me and be astonished. And lay your hands upon my mouth. Even when I remember I am afraid and tremble. And trembling take it hold of me, of my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked, now I'm starting from verse 7. Pay very close attention. Wherefore do the wicked leave? Become old, yea. They become mighty in power. Their seed is established in, the, in, the, in their sight with them and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are saved from fear. Neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bulls generate and fill it not. Their cow clevered and casteth not her calf. Brethren, follow this very closely because what I want to do tonight is to establish the foundation and the basis. If you say, oh, I want the prosperity from God, and I'm believing God that God is going to give you the grace to sign up for him, and you're going to do whatever it needs in order for you to stand with him. Okay. Verse 11. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and the harp, and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth, and a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto God, listen very well now, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? Lo, their good is not in their hands. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and how often cometh their destruction upon them? They are as stubble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carried away. God laid up his iniquity for his children. He rewarded him, and he shall know it. His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what pleasure had he in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? Shall any teach God knowledge? Sin. He judgeth those that are high. One died in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breath, his breast is full of milk, and the bones are moist with marrow. And another died in bitterness of his soul. 
and never eat it with pleasure. They shall lie down like, alike in the dust, and the worm shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, where is the house of the prince, and where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know they are talking? Verse 30. That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he had done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. The clots of the valley shall be sweet unto him. And every man shall draw after him as there are innumerable before him. How then come, comfort ye me in vain, seeing in your answers there remaineth falsehood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you want to compare this Psalm 21 with, I mean, sorry, Job chapter 21 with Psalm chapter 78. Now, 73 rather. Now, Psalm 73 was written by King David. King David, let's go to 73. Hallelujah. It says from verse 1, it said, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. This is a testimony of David said in verse 2. He said, But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, vowel and covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heaven, and their tongues walk through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and water of a full cup are uh, wronged out of them. And they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I say, verily have I cleansed my hand in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the days long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, how will speak thus? Behold, I shall offend against the generation of my children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Verse 17, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their hand. Praise the Lord. The world we are living in, essentially, is being controlled by spiritual elements. The kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. Each of this kingdom jostling and campaigning for souls. If you belong to the kingdom of light, there are laws laid down. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, I read from verse 1, Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1, he said, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, thy God, to observe and to do all this, all his commandment, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We go on and on and on and on to read about what God says. As many of you who say you belong to the kingdom of light, these are the things that you must do. You must subscribe to it and you must live by it. The same with those who belong to the kingdom of darkness. There are things they subscribe to. They live by those rules and they can't break the rule. If anything happens, they want to break the rules, they will break their lives. Because they enter into such covenant with their lives. They were conscious and they said, yeah, there's going to be wealth now. Don't forget the fact that when Jesus was here, Jesus Christ was accosted by the devil. In Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says Jesus came and the devil appeared at the mount, I mean the, the, the temptation. And the devil came to tell him, I want you to bow down and worship me. And I'm going to commit all this wealth into your hand. Let's go there now. Matthew chapter 4. I want you to open your Bible. Open your Bible. Don't wait for this. Open your Bible. Let's read together. Don't be a lazy Christian. There are some of you that say you should open to the book of uh, uh, Nahum. You think it's not in the Bible. Especially I say open to Obadiah. You say, Pastor, are you sure he's there? Or, or Habakkuk. Praise the Lord. I, I, I observe that when you talk of prosperity, you see, this is one topic the devil does not, I mean, the devil is excited when they preach it in churches because he has corrupted it. Unfortunately, some of them who are basking in the euphoria of prosperity, they have already missed it. The devil has already connected them unknowingly. But you will not miss the mark in the name of Jesus. Amen. Prosperity can be given by Satan. The same way God can give prosperity. And one of the secrets of the devil is after giving prosperity to somebody who has been praying for God or to God, Lord bless me, Lord bless me. He gives them prosperity, but subtly it comes in with other things that they are not aware of. Number one, pride. Now, in as much as the devil can connect you with pride. You belong to him. Because pride is not of God. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, no, but this guy thinks that, oh, it's God that gave me the prosperity. The devil has already overtaken. Don't forget, Jesus was speaking. He said, you can't serve God and mammon. You have to pick one. Be loyal. Be obedient to one. Then you despise the other. But even at this... God still gives prosperity. Now you look around the world. Very few people who are rich and they are humble. Very rich. I mean very few. Because the devil knows how to connect people. That is why I'm telling you brethren. For some of you who are here tonight. You've been praying Lord bless me. Lord bless me. And God has not released the prosperity. I mean in form of cash. is because he's working on you. There are some. As soon as you land money. I mean money. Maybe you don't know. The Bible says money has spirit. There are spirit that controls money. A sense of security. A sense, a sense of self-dependency. As soon as money begins to come, it says that I don't need to pray. I don't need God all the time. I don't need vigil. I don't need to go to Bible study. There is enough money in my bank account. That is how it works. You will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Yeah. Don't forget, including the devil, God created him. So, the creature cannot be smarter than the creator. So, God having everything, he says in Haggai chapter 2, he says in verse 8, he says, silver is mine and gold is mine. He has everything. Now, you are asking, but pastor, why is it that, that as believers, we pray and pray and pray before God releases prosperity? It is because of your soul. Your soul is more valuable. Your soul is more important to God. Whatever you think is what we are thinking, I mean, whatever you think is the big deal here on planet Earth is nothing to God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, a new car. Oh, a new phone. They are just rubbish. It's not a big deal to God. So if a child is crying, 
And the, the father is saying, I mean, God, your father is saying, I know, son, hold on. You are asking for money. I'm going to give you. But there is a need for me to develop you, to build you up. It is only then you can enjoy whatever God gives to you. Or else the devil will overtake you. He has overtaken a lot of people. He has killed a lot of people. Send their souls to hell. And they will remain there. Now, I want to ask a question. Assuming you never became rich here on earth. But eventually you made it to heaven. Which one is better? Somebody say, I ah, know a pastor. I will be really yeah. Thank God, the wealth is not in my hands. It's in the hand of God. And the Bible says, it decides who to give it to. So it's not a matter of, I'm praying now, I'm going to tear the heaven. He said, riches, honor, belongs to him, and he decides whosoever he pleases, he gives it, give it to them. But I'm just asking a very general question. I said, okay, assuming you never tasted affluence, for instance. What do we call affluence? I mean, that is the extreme of riches. And here on earth, you still serve God in you know, faithfulness and you made it to heaven. Which one is better? Okay. You know why I asked that question? We're going to pick some wisdom from what uh, Solomon said. He was rich. He had everything. In fact, he got the time. He said, he, he, he got whatever he so desired. But at the end of his journey here on earth, he came to his senses. And he said, all that I have amassed, who knows who is going to take it after me? And of course, another person took it. So I, I, I don't want us to have this mentality of do and die about prosperity. No, 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 no. The Bible says there are some, they chased after it, they ran after it, they have made shipwreck of their, of their, of their destiny. Some, they pierced their soul with darts. Listen to me. God is your father. In as much as your ways are pleasing to him, he said there is no good thing. Underline the word. There is no good thing he will be told from those who walk upright. But even at that, I'm going to tell you, maybe on Wednesday, the trap of pleasure. That's going to be the message for Wednesday. The trap of pleasure. Prosperity is good. We believe God for prosperity. We are praying God for prosperity. But when prosperity comes in, that is the danger. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Lift up your right hand and say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. I am of the school of thought that you can never amount to anything outside of God. It does not matter your qualification. It doesn't matter your certificate. I strongly believe, based on what the Bible says in Psalms chapter 127 verse 1, except the Lord builds the house, the builder, the build but in vain. It doesn't matter your qualification. If God is not involved, all effort equals fertility. So the reason we are teaching ourselves is for us, how do we align ourselves to God? As the Bible says in the that book of Pro, uh, Job, you must first acquaint yourself with the Lord first. That is the first thing. Acquaint now yourself. Job chapter 22, I think chapter 22 from verse 21. You first acquaint yourself with him. Every other thing outside of God never, will never, ever, ever work. Do you understand what I'm saying? You remain at peace with him. By doing that, you have already subscribed to him. It's not on your own terms now. Listen, brethren. A lot of us, we want wealth, but on our own terms. It's not yours. It is his. So if he says, acquaint now yourself with me and be at peace with me, so shall good come unto you. Job chapter 22 from verse 21 there, downwards. He says, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, not from the mouth of Satan. Satan has his own laws. His laws are very grievous. 
His laws are very, very hard. As many people have come under him, they can tell you the story. That is why there is nobody who has subscribed to wealth through Satan gives out gifts to people. No, 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 no. They don't. Because it's one of their conditions. You don't do good with it. Yet the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22, it is the blessing of God that makes you rich and it has no sorrow. There are so many people whom you call wealthy people. Oh, they are billionaires, yet they are in satanic cage. Because the one who gave it to them, gave it to them based on conditions. Such people cannot take their tithes to church. They pay Satan their tithe. Such people can never do good. Forget about, oh, charity, blah, blah, blah. It's just cover up. They know the source of everything. Because they collected from Satan. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, right from the time Adam sinned against God, I mean, and they were driven out of the Garden of Eden, from that time the devil took over the legal ground, you know, to be in charge of this planet Earth. That was why in that matter where we, 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 we were out, uh, talking about, he came to Jesus and he said, bow down, and I'm going to give you. Indeed, he has it. He said, for I will give it to whosoever I want to. It is true. That is why, you see, you can't see business Mongol in the world. Real business tycoon. All of them, majority of them, they belong to certain cult. As, I mean, there was a case of a, a medical doctor. He was doing very well and they, I mean, they, they, they came to him and they said, Oh, you guys, you are doing very well. We want you to come to this club. They call it club. You need to belong. Because you can't just rise and be shining. That is why when he gives them the condition, there is a particular time he shoots them down. That is why the Bible says in that Job chapter 20, 21 where we read, it said their years are cut short. But when God gives you his own wealth, that is from him. He gave it to you. It will never have sorrow. In fact, such wealth is what the Bible calls the wealth that you can transfer to your posterity. To your children's children. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm saying this in order for you to desire it. Because God will do it exactly for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The wealth from Satan is full of sorrow. Now, I wonder why a lot of people are queuing for that. The kind of word that comes from Jesus, from God. He says in Psalm 112, from verse 1, he says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that greatly delighted in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3, he says, wealth and riches shall be in his house. This is what I desire my father to put in your house. Amen. Wealth and riches We come to your house because you do what? Because you fear God. Wealth and riches. So why is wealth and riches not coming to the house of believers? Some of them are not, they don't fear God. They don't greatly delight you see, all those things are written there. The man that feared the Lord greatly delighted in his commandment. There are some people, the commandment of God is very grievous to them. They feel it's too harsh. That is why I asked you the question the first time. Why do people want the things that God has? Yet, they don't want that God. They think, no, 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 this is too much. This is too hard. Well, why will I have wealth and money and everything and I'm not free to eat whatever I want to eat? I'm not free to drink whatever I want to drink. I'm not free to, uh, to go to places I want to go to. Blessed is that man that feared the Lord. Just like the case of Job. Job chapter 1 from verse 1. He feared God, he ensured evil. He feared God. He feared God. The fear of God, which the Bible says, is the beginning of, the, of wisdom.
He went on by saying, verse 2, he says, Seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I'm trying to establish the fact that when we are talking about wealth, there is a need for us to put a distinction or classify it. The wealth from Satan, which is the majority that is being displayed out there. Wealth from Satan. He sits as the prince of this world and he monitors all the affairs. Oh, somebody says, I want to become a president. They tell him, you need to belong to that cult. Somebody says, I want to experience breakthrough in my business. As a freight and logistic guy, they said there is, a, there is a group you need to belong to. Now, listen to me, brethren. You, a child of God, ask you, say, no, 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 no. The way of God is the only way I want to go. They say, okay, we are going to make things very hard for you. Shall we all rise up? This is not a time for you to drop your head. This is a time for you to look straight. For the word that is coming out is the word that is going to liberate you. Is the word that is going to give you your own inheritance among those who are sanctified. We are teaching you, brethren, there are places you go, even we call them churches where you go, where things against Satan is not well defined. They generalize it. There are groups we call cartel. Some of them are drug bearers. Some of them are into human trafficking. What are they looking for? All of them are looking for wealth. Are you sure you can do it? They say, test me. Human rituals everywhere. Those are the wealth that comes from Satan. And at his own will, he can easily blow it away. And at the end, that person will still appear in hell with him. So which one do you choose? The way of righteousness may be hard, but in the final analysis, it pays. You see, David was saying, he said, until I went into the house of God, then understood I their hand. Do you remember he said, he said, their faces stand out with fatness. In other words, they don't know about fasting. It's a, they, they, are not, they, don't, they, they don't run into trouble as every other person because if any of them runs into trouble, maybe with the police, they have police as their representatives. They have their connection, their contact everywhere. I read of a guy who is into human ritual. And this guy, can you imagine, each time the police arrested him, he will always say to himself, because all of them belong to the same league. Brethren, the league of righteousness is what we belong to. Now, it may seem as if the thing is not coming. Stay tuned with God. Because it is still in your advantage. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? With what is he going to give an exchange? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying this in order to establish the fact that, brethren, when you crave or you in your quest for God's blessing, there is a need for you to settle down in order for you to follow his terms and his conditions. I gave you an, an illustration the other time. You want to travel to any country of the world, they have their embassies and they have their conditions, their terms and their conditions. No matter how fast or how pressed you may be, oh, you want to travel to that country, you need to go and apply. And your application must meet their standard. Your anointing, notwithstanding. Now, by the time you apply, it does not mean that your application is going to be accepted. They will have to scrutinize and peruse the application. If you are, if you, if you, if you met their condition, then they will allow you. Are you with me? The same thing. If you have to subscribe to the kingdom wealth or kingdom prosperity, there are things you have to sub, 
you know, you know, you have to subject yourself to terms of God, how it operates in his kingdom. It's not the kingdom of Satan. It is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Somebody say the kingdom of God. So the wealth in the kingdom of God is, they are rich. I mean, real, real. And God gives it to people as he wills. Don't think that all the people you see around the world who are prosperous and they go to church, all of them got their wealth through Jesus. No. As a matter of fact, there are some of them who are even members of churches and they pay tithe to the church. Well, somebody said, but why is it that the pastor will receive the tithe? Is there any correlation or need that this one is from this thing? The Bible says anything that comes to the altar, the altar sanctifies it. Who brought, um, two brothers brought sacrifice to God. And God rejected the offering of one of them. And he had pleasure in the offering of the other one. Hallelujah. Amen. That is not to approve of people who are into dubious businesses. But for instance, if somebody comes to the church... Like my friend said the other time, now you'll be seated, God bless you. Somebody said in, in, in a particular country, he came and this person is into a particular business. He came to the pastor and said, Pastor, pray for me. I'm going on a business trip. What is the business trip? He can't even come out to share the testimony. And it has to be conditions. So how much percentage are you giving, pastor? All those kind of words, they are satanically connected. They are the kind of words that bring sorrow. If the pastor has collected anything like that, knowingly, there is a way such thing will reprove them. Or reproach them, rather. Because it says sin. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach. A lot of people say, oh, in UAE, we are looking for money. People are looking for money here. And I met somebody the other time, and he said to me, how can you expect somebody bringing in people from any part of the world, either from India, from uh, Pakistan, from uh, Philippines, from Africa, for the purpose, the sole purpose of prostitution? And they lock the person in the house, and the person doesn't have, yeah, the person is collecting money. Those wealth, they never last. Whoever picks such wealth, they are only building up sorrow for their generations unborn. Because it involves blood. The way of Satan is hard also. But because people want to enjoy it for a while, they don't mind. I know of a man who said in our country... It's let me just taste the wealth. It doesn't matter. If I taste it today and he dies tomorrow, he says it doesn't really matter. Let people know that he also made it. Foolishness. Can you, know, can you see what the Bible says? He said, making them now to do the things that are not convenient. Romans chapter 1 from verse 28 downwards. Things that are not convenient. So, with the times and the condition of Satan, he puts it across to them. Are you ready? You are doing it. Okay, seal it up with an oath. That's what they call covenant. It is that hard. Some of them go to the graveyard. Some of them sleep with mad people. Some of them, they will tell them that, yeah, your wife is going to go for it. And the guy say, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Some of them will say, well, your mom is going to go for it. Because those are the terms that the devil gave them. So willingly, they accept it. And you see it seems they are progressing. They are making it. All those things will not last. Is somebody still with me? Yes. The same way the devil has his own terms and his condition. I, I told you initially, I said God also has his own. But people are never ready to stand with the times of God. And this is what happened in most cases. They think that they collected it from God. <laughs> By the time they go back from me or go away from him, the devil strikes again. 
But that is not the kind of wealth I'm believing God to give you. As many of us whose hearts are ready, your heart is fixed. Say it is God and God alone. No matter the coloration, no matter who is coming, painting it. Oh, you need to join a club. You need to join a group. Oh, they just call it a fellowship. Even among the brethren. Somebody was telling me a school where the cultist. Cultist now. But they gave it another painting. They don't call it cult. They call it uh, fellowship of the brothers. And what they do there is satanic, demonic. All in the beat to win souls. They are everywhere. In the universities. In the business sector. All the sectors, they are there. So a born-again child of God is thinking, but why is it that things seem very hard? Because there is a prince in this world. He is called the prince of this world. He's Satan. He has his... Now, I don't know how many of you, when we are reading the hymns, when we, when, when we sing the hymns, you follow the wordings very well. The foes, they are uncountable. As you think, oh, you subdue this, they are recruiting again. But the final victory is certain. Because in as much as you are in light in Christ, he already gave you victory. Amen. Amen. In as much as you are with him, you never run away from him. Because when temptation, when things of the world becomes very hard, that is when the heart of man begins to fail them. They begin to think, so is this how it's going to continue? No, brother, I have a news to you, for you this evening. It will not continue like that. Because there is a God that we serve. He is too faithful to fail. He says he takes pleasure in your prosperity. When we are talking about prosperity now, I'm, I'm sure you know that prosperity is not only on monetary terms. There are people who are prosperous financially, but health-wise they are not. What kind of prosperity are you talking about? There are some you think, oh, they are making headway in their career. Oh, this lady is successful. She is, a, she is a career person. But she has already sacrificed one thing you don't know. She has already sacrificed something. And she knows quite well. But here you are. You envy. You admire. Oh, how I wish. Your case is like the Israelite. Who left the house of bondage? They left Egypt. And they started lamenting. And they started singing and crying. Oh, we remember those days when we sit behind the cucumber pot. When we eat garlic. When we eat onions and all those stuff. But they were slaves. They were slaves in Egypt. But now they are desired now. They are free now. But because the food is not coming the way they're supposed to come. Can you, can you measure? Can you value your deliverance? Can you value the victory he has given to you? That is the, case, the same case like the Israelite. God saved them by his mighty power. They passed through the Red Sea. They came to the land, the other, the other land, and he gave them the land of their enemies. Now because of scarcity of bread, they forgot the mighty deliverance God gave them. That is our plight. Brethren, I would like to tell you, when we talk about wealth, wealth is like a house. Are you with me? Yes, sir. A house locked up, full with riches and everything beautiful. And there is a guard at the, at, the, at the entrance. We call it the strong man. You want to go in, you need to contend with that first. Now if you are able to break through, then you take whatever is there. Your father, my father, is the owner of all. One of the things I'm believing God to give to you, to give to us in this house, creative ideas. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Because when you're talking about money, about wealth, about prosperity, it follows something. It must follow something.
Can I conclude by telling you, brethren, there is nobody in the kingdom that can ever dream of prosperity if he's not serving God. The same way the servants of Satan serves him and he gives them wealth. The same way if you don't serve God. It says in the book of uh, Job chapter 36 and verse 11, if they obey, if they serve him and they obey him, that is when they will spend their years in what? In prosperity. They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they don't serve, listen to me, I wanted to make the distinction now. The serving you are doing now is you are serving God. You are not serving mammon. Listen to this. You are serving God. And the God you are serving is Lord over all. Now because you serve him, he now pushes what? Wealth to you. In a situation where you have misplaced your priority, you begin to serve mammon. You can't serve God. In fact, at that even at that, what happens is the devil overtakes that particular situation. You think the wealth is from God. The wealth is not from God. It's from Satan. Is the Lord blessing somebody this night? Yes, sir. So the kingdom wealth that we talked about is what you can ask your father. He says, it's the will of your father to give you the kingdom. And when we are talking about kingdom wealth, kingdom wealth, prosperity in the kingdom, it is not what you labor to get. It's a gift from God. Don't forget that you can write that down. It's a gift. He giveth it to whomsoever he will. Hallelujah. A lot of people, they think that, uh, oh, because I'm coming to church, that is serving God. No, God knows your heart. He knows your heart. He knows what you are looking, what you are after. That is why, thank God, he is not a man. He is a God. He looks right into your heart. Because there are some people, okay, you say I should serve God. Okay, I'm ready. They start serving God. First month, six months, one year, two years. If that which they are asking for doesn't come, they say, God, bye-bye. Already he knows their heart. It is such people, you see, they tell you, all these things are not real. It's because they are not ready to go all the way with him. I read an account in the book of, uh, in the book of Exodus when Moses went to the top of the Deuteronomy rather when Moses went to the mountain, the first time God gave him the tablet, God healed it for him. He gave it to him. Now after Moses blasted that opportunity, God called him come to the top of the mountain. But this time around, you get the get it for yourself, heal it for yourself, and bring it up. That speaks about. How some believers, you think they are with Jesus Christ. As soon as you give them opportunity, they will blow it up. They will waste it. If you are in this meeting today, and God has given you an opportunity, and you missed it, you messed up with it, I ask for the mercy of God tonight to catch up with you in Jesus' name. Amen. In the kingdom we belong to, Things must be done orderly and decently. Even in the kingdom of Satan, they have order there. They have order. Maybe you don't know. They keep vigil also. They do fellowship also. But their fellowship is more strict. Their conditions are terrible. So I want to ask you, brethren, why are you not committing your life in serving God? 
Why have you not signed up totally? You tell him, Lord, if you bless me, I will serve you. Even if you are not blessing me, I'm still going to serve you. Because this is the conclusion, brethren. There is no how you can serve him faithfully, diligently, committedly, with the whole of your heart, and he will not bless you. Shall we rise up on our feet? Don't forget we said the first thing you need to do is you need to come back. He said in the book of uh, 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 Malachi, in the book of Agai also, he says, return unto me, return unto me, return unto me. As many people have backslidden. They still want blessings from God, but they have gone away from him. What, I mean, what a paradox. How do you expect for him to give it to you? Can a, a child who is loved by a father or a child in the family begins to misbehave and he thinks to secure the favor of that father. It's not possible. That is, one of the, that is one thing we do with God at times as children of God. You think I can misbehave, yet I come to him, I say, God, I need this. And he gives it to you. Yeah, he's a merciful father, but the Bible says he's also a consuming fire. God is a strict father. Are you with me? He is a strict father. If he says to you, you will obey diligently. Observe and obey diligently. You need to do it. If you are not diligent enough, you are only postponing the day of your visitation. There are many babies in the body of Christ who are crying for gold. They are not mature. Yet they want to handle big things. It can never happen. Because the kingdom we belong to is a very strict kingdom. What we value, what to take very power, I mean, oh, this is powerful, is nothing to God. Nothing. I don't. Now, I want you to shift. I want a shift in your spirit, man, now. What you think is, hey, Oh, look at it. This is beautiful. They are, it's nothing. Brethren, it's nothing before God. Even you standing, you are ordinary dust. How do we reconcile that? A man who comes out and is bragging and is doing like this. Do you know who I am? Do you know, do you know my what? Do you know, do you know me? He himself is ordinary dust. Now, if human beings, they are those who created all these things. So, what are we talking about? May God give you wisdom. Amen. Prosperity is not far from you if you have discovered the place of wisdom in life. I discover. Those who are hunting after wealth, they are the one the devil takes over their lives. Because the devil will tell them, oh, you can, I can give it to you if only you bow down to me. The same way, the same way the devil told Jesus Christ, he tells so many people like that. And they did the same thing. You ask me, Pastor, how do I know? Oh, they're everywhere, even in this country. She came into UAE, no job, but she got a job and they said, if you don't sleep with me, I can't give it to you. That is you buying that. He came into the country and I said, oh, if you don't become this religion, we are not going to give you the job. He bows down. That is it. It may be hard, I'm telling you, because the devil is, is responsible for that hardship. He says, small time, you're going to come back. But I bet you, brethren, if you keep your stand with God, you say, even though he slay me, I will still follow him. That was the position of Job. Did he die? So all this bread and butter Christianity that we are practicing and you are thinking with that, you can connect with kingdom wealth. No, it is not like that. There is one thing that is paramount in the heart of the Father. His kingdom is paramount. If you don't love his kingdom, don't think you can enjoy his wealth. 
the kingdom of God, his kingdom, his house is paramount to him. And if your heart is far away from his kingdom, don't think that you can enjoy the kingdom wealth. Whatever you get, especially through struggle, you are allowed, get it. But if it has to come from God, one of the doors, one of the ways you open it up is you seeking after his kingdom. And it says, every other thing shall be added to you. He said it, and he's faithful to keep his word. It says, heaven and earth shall pass away. No dot from his word will ever go without being fulfilled. Are you with me? Lift up your hand and worship him tonight. We, we, we are just starting tonight. Preparing your heart for what God wants to do. So it depends on how many of us are ready to sign up. Oh, it may be tough, but it's doable. I wanted to thank him, tell him, Father, I'm grateful that I belong to this kingdom of light. This, this kingdom of light, this kingdom of light, kingdom of light, is not the same thing as kingdom of Satan, kingdom of darkness, no. Lord, thank you for saving me. You translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. I'm glad I belong to this kingdom. I am glad I belong to this kingdom. The kingdom of our dear Lord Jesus Christ. Bless his name. I appreciate him. It's a privilege to be taught this truth. There are places where they will tell you it doesn't really matter, but it matters. In as much as you belong to light, he said you run away from every appearances of darkness. Anything that has to do with evil, you run away from it.